Hey guys, welcome back to the channel New Growth Naturals and today live stream will all be about teaching you how to care for your natural hair. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to start this out. Give this live stream a big thumbs up as soon as you get on here. Yeah, my hair is messy. Anyway, that's not what we're here for today. So I just want to come on here and talk a little bit about your natural hair health because I know a lot of persons tend to focus on length more than the health of the hair. Once your hair is healthy, naturally you'll get length. So don't worry about length so much. Healthy hair equals length retention, okay? So the first thing I want to teach you about your hair is that healthy hair grows from a healthy scalp. Hi, Lisa Lo. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Nola. Thanks for joining me. Give this live stream a big thumbs up and share it so other persons can come on and learn as well. Right. So once your scalp is healthy, healthy hair will grow from it. So if you have dandruff, if you have itchy scalp, if you have certain scalp issue, you may not be getting the maximum health and length retention that you want to get from your hair. Simply because think about it as a garden. If you have good soil, you plant your seeds, you water your seeds, then you have healthy plants. But if the soil is not that good, no matter how good the seed is, it's not going to germinate, it's not going to grow. And if it does germinate, it will start to grow weak. So in the leaves of the weather or too much of like sun hot or pests or fungi, those things will tend to damage your plants. So you want to make sure that your scalp is healthy, your scalp is clean. Yeah, I emphasize clean because I know not to, you don't like to wash your hair often. When I say often, I mean you should at least wash your hair every two weeks or at least every month. Like if you have itchy scalp, you can do it like every week, but over here, I would recommend for you to be washing over here every day because over here is extremely fragile. It tends to get dry. And the more you wash your hair, the more you're washing off that natural oil, which is called sebum that is supposed to coat your hair to prevent breakage and to keep it moisturized and lubricated. If you're just joining me, hi, nice to have y'all. <laughs> I'm happy that you guys came, like, y'all keeping my company. It's raining cats and dogs outside. And I'm here and I'm just thinking, like, I'm going through my comments on my videos on my channel. And I was like, so many of you are asking the same questions. Like, how can I get my hair to grow out? I've been trying everything. Trust me, I know you have not been trying everything. Because if you've been trying everything, you'd figure out long ago that your hair is growing. So growth will not be your issue. Why you don't have longer hair, why you're not retaining length, that is what we need to focus on, all right? Hi, Apple. Love you too, girl. <laughs> Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Lisa Love. Welcome, all of y'all. Hi, Lady. Welcome to the channel. Give this live a big thumbs up. So the first thing you need to know about natural hair, well, I don't really want to focus so much on 4C hair. I have 4C hair, but natural hair in general. Just like every other ethnicity, black people hair grows. Maybe it grows sometimes at a slower rate. And that's just because of your genetics. It's because of your health. It's because of products that you may be using on your hair. But your hair is growing and that, that is what is important to know. So then if your hair is growing, why is it that you're not seeing any length retention? That's because it's constantly breaking off. Or hair is extremely fragile, coily hair, curly hair is constant. It's very fragile. Where you have the bonds, where the curls form, the least little thing you do to that hair is going to pop, it's going to break. So you have to treat your hair very gentle. There's no way you can be having a comb just raking your hair like that and thinking that, Oh, I'm not doing any damage. Trust me, your hair is very fragile. So take this challenge up. Three months, no combs. Well, you can use comb for sectioning, of course, but no combs for three months for detangling. Just use your fingers. Do a low manipulative style where you're not constantly touching your hair. You don't have to constantly detangle your hair. And prove me wrong. Within that three months, no comb. Just use your finger, gently detangle your hair in sections and see if you haven't made progress. Because for three months, 
you're supposed to at least have an inch and a half worth of growth on average. You may have a little bit more. Some persons here grow faster, some person here grow slower, but you're not supposed to end up with less than an inch after three months. So if you're retaining that amount of hair, hair by just omitting combs, then you must figure out that, listen, my hair is growing. <laughs> What is this breaking? So first you need to figure out what is causing your hair to break. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Darkus. Nice to have you guys. <laughs> I am going to answer your question soon. I just want to get this off my mind because I've been saying it over and over in my videos and I feel like y'all don't get me sometimes. I'm telling you, your hair grows, even if it's growing really so, like even if you're only getting like half an inch for every two months or every three months, the fact that it is growing, that's a big plus. You just need to retain it. So first of all, I want to say, think about not doing so much to your hair. Like everywhere I'm seeing a lot of videos on YouTube on, oh, you need to deep condition, you need to use this product, that product, and it can be so confusing. Less is more. When it comes to your natural hair, less is more. You need a very simple regimen. You don't need to be doing all of that sort of thing to your hair to get your hair to be healthy, to get your hair to be long. Just keep it real simple. So I'm going to give you a list of things that you need. Say you're transitioning, say you just become natural, or you didn't know about natural hair care before, but now you plan to treat your hair better. You plan to go on a healthy natural hair journey. So the first thing you'll definitely need is a white tooth comb. Yeah, a white tooth comb. You need a spray bottle to put water, oils, and different stuff to keep your hair hydrated. You need a satin scarf. I hope you guys are taking notes. You need a satin scarf or a silk bonnet or a satin pillowcase. You need products that works with your hair. You need like a sulfate-free shampoo, paraben-free conditioners. Ditch the grease for now. You need natural oils. Oils that works for you. I'm going to give you a list of oils, but to each his own, what may works for me and my hair, because no matter how our hair seems similar, we may react differently to different things based on your hair's porosity, based on the health of your scalp, based on just how God made us, individual, different. But use natural oils like olive oil, castor oil, ojoba oil, argan oils, avocado oils. Pumpkin seed oils, there are so many natural oils that out there that aids in healthy scalp and help to stimulate hair growth. So invest in natural oils. Put aside grease for now. We're not discussing grease right now. Put aside grease. If you have high porosity here, you want to invest in thick butters, like African shea butter. You want to invest like mango butter. You want to do beeswax, stuff like that. If you have low porosity here, you want to do light oils that are protein free, like argan oil, you want to do oils that are penetrating the hair because low person hair means that the shaft of the hair, the cuticle is closed. And because the cuticle is closed, it makes your hair hard to really retain the moisture. It's hard for the moisture to penetrate the strands. So in order to get those cuticles open and for the moisture to get in the strand, you have to do a more greenhouse effect by simply just putting on a steam cap or something of the sort. Whenever you put your moisturizer in, whenever you're doing your deep conditioners, just to get your cuticle to lift so the product can really get into the strand and do what it's supposed to do. So for low porosity here, lighter products, milder products, penetrating oils, and so on. High porosity here, you want to use protein products, creamy, thick products. And that, again, is based on the size of your strands. If you have fine hair, if you have thick hair, if you have coarse hair, y'all do your research. There's a lot of information out there, but I'm just giving you synopsis. So another thing that you need to start on your natural hair healthy growth journey is, well, I say satin scarf, I say white tooth comb. Oh, yes. You need a healthy diet because sweetheart, let's believe our body is made up from the food we eat. You are what you eat. I, I'm sure you hear that umpteen times. You're what you eat. It is real. And our body prioritizes. So God made us so wonderful that your body is going to try to survive at any given cost. So if you're eating food that is not so nutritious, the little nutrients that you may be getting from the food is going to go to your heart, your lungs, your liver, to the organs of the body that keeps you alive, that keeps you going. 
your skin, your nails, your hair is not so important. So they will suffer. And because it's not getting enough nutrients, your hair will become weak. It will fall out. It will break easy. It will become so brittle. And over time, it will get thin and it will start aging. And then you're thinking that, oh, my hair is not as thick as oh, it used to be. Yes, it is true that medication also affect your the thickness of your hair. Your age does affect it. But diet has a big role to play. So take check of your diet. Eat up your fruits, your veggies. You know, take your vitamins. There are so many nutrients that is critical for you to have in your body to have healthy hair growth. Some persons just naturally grow thick, lustrous hair without even... They eat any junk. They take anything. They live any life. That is just genetic. And if you don't have the genes that do that, honey, you need to just focus on eating healthy, exercising. Exercising is so important because when you exercise, you stimulate blood flow all over your body your blood you boost blood circulation and the blood is what actually take the nutrients from the food that you eat to your follicles so by exercising you're taking nutrients to your hair follicles and that really help head in stimulating air growth it makes no sense you buy a bag of product a bag of oils putting on your scalp and then you're here to stimulate the follicles if your blood is not feeding the hair popular because it doesn't it doesn't add up you need to treat it from outside you need to treat it from inside so in, inside out in other words guys i am overwhelmed sometimes i really want to help all of you but it gets overwhelming sometimes because i have a job i have so many other platforms so to to really respond to your comments individually sometimes take a lot I really appreciate your support on my channel. I really appreciate you commenting. And I really want you to continue doing that because the more you comment, even though I may not respond to you individually, I can come on live, make some little notes and say, all right, a number of persons giving me this comment about itchy scalp or a number of persons giving me this comment about their hair not growing, a number of persons giving me comments about their hair thinning out. And then I can come on live, make notes and, this, uh, and address those issues. So please bear with me, please understand. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just love laughing. Right. What else do I need to talk to you about? Yes. Itchy scalp. Now, sometimes persons comment on my videos and say, what can I use for itchy scalp? Before, I would just say, oh, buy this treatment. Use it on your scalp. Use aloe vera. Use stuff like that. My scalp itching because I'm talking about it. <laughs> but... No, I want to say something else to you. Itchy scalp is based on a lot of things. It comes, it, it, we may not know the immediate cause of why your scalp is itch, itching, and that's what I'd like for you to know. Is it that your scalp is dry? Is that you have dandruff? Is it that you have some other stuff going on there on your scalp? What, what is causing your scalp to itch? Once you know that, then you can attack the issue. If I say use aloe vera, while aloe vera may soothe your scalp, Soothe, soothe your scalp, sorry. What am I saying? <laughs> While it may soothe your scalp and help to, you know, clear your follicles and all, it may not treat the underlining issue that you're having, the underlining problem, and sooner or later your scalp continue itching. I remember there was a time in my life when I had flaky scalp, when my scalp would continue itch continuously, no matter what I used on it. But as soon as I addressed the issue, I realized that it was more on diet. So you get to lessen the amount of oils that you're taking in and also the it was based on a hormonal factor and yeast in the body that was causing my scalp to be so flaky and itchy. So even though I was using aloe vera, I got relief because the aloe vera soothes the scalp. I had to find out what was really causing the scalp to flake. And I don't have that issue. As a matter of fact, I don't even know when it had stopped. But what I do know is that using products that are pH balanced do a lot. Like it does a lot to maintaining the pH balance of the scalp. And by doing that, you don't have flaking, you don't have itching so much. So anywhere from 4.5 to 5.5, that's where you want to get your products to. So in order to test your pH, the pH balance of your product, you just can you get pH strips off Amazon wherever. I'm not sure if Walmart probably have those. Or a pharmacy. So you use the strips, you put it in the product, you look at the color, you match it at the box or whatever containers they came in, and then you can know 
if it is pH balance or if it's where you want it to be. And once it is 4.5 to 5.5, you'll significantly realize that your scalp don't itch as much. It doesn't flake as much because sometimes it is just reacting to the products that you're using because your scalp can be hella sensitive sometimes. Yeah. Apart from dandruff and other stuff. There's neem oils. There are so many oils and natural stuff out there for you to use. But sis, I'd really want you to know what is causing your scalp to flake, what is causing your scalp to be itchy, see a dermatologist, see somebody that can really take a look at your scalp or, you know, do some research, do something. Many times we can resolve these things on our own by doing research anyways. What else do I need to talk to you about today? Let me glance at my notes. <laughs> In the meantime, you can ask me questions. Right, so Stephanie is saying hydrolyzed wheat protein is good for a low purse there. Yeah, that is true. Lighter proteins. <laughs> I'm happy to see y'all helping each other in the comment section. Sis, I am so happy. Y'all talking back to each other, responding to each other's comments and questions. I'm happy. So while I'm talking, trying to get the information, some of y'all explaining for me. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Right, so... Here's another thing. Here's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about. If you really want to see your hair grow healthy and long, ditch the amount of heat that you put on your hair. When I say heat, I mean heat tools, blow jars, flat irons, pressing combs. Ditch them. Like pack them in a little box and put them away for probably a year and a half or six months or just take a break from the heat. Because when you use heat on your hair, you break down the bonds of your hair, especially, and it doesn't matter. Don't tell me, oh, you use a heat protectant. Heat protectants are not. Heat protectants are good when occasionally when you decide that you want to blow out your hair to see the length or to give yourself a trim or to just to wear a different style occasionally. Occasionally mean like every six months or every year. But if you're constantly blow drying your hair, you're not going to retain a lot of length. Like, you're not going to retain the maximum amount of length that you could have retained without the heat. Trust me. So try and find a way that you'll get your hair stretched. Because if you're like myself, I don't like to see my hair shrunken. Not because of I don't like short hair, but because when my hair is shrunken, it tends to get a lot of coils and knots and it makes detangling harder. My hair tends to break a lot, no matter what leave-in or detangler I put on it. So I like to keep my hair stretched. For stretching my hair, especially when it was much shorter, before I did my big chop, I used to do a lot of bantu knots. I used to do African threading. Styles like those, I do braids. Like The thing I like about doing braids is keep my hair stretched. And when I take out my hair, it's not at all tangled. So find another alternative to stretch your hair without using the heat. And on this hair growth challenge that I'm going back to grow back my hair to waist length, because y'all, if you have been watching me, know that I had waistline hair, I did a big chop, and I'm now growing back my hair to waistline, so I'm now doing a challenge. Heat won't be a part of my regimen. Heat has not been a part of my regimen. I blow dry my hair like once per year, if at all, or sometimes too when things happen and I have an important event to go to or something, but the most two times per year, but most time I don't use blow dryers. I do African threading, bantu knots, like I said before. But heat won't be a part of my hair regimen. I deep condition my hair as often as I wash it. When I mean wash, I don't mean like when you're taking shower and you just run the water through your hair. I don't mean like that. But once you're going to be using a shampoo on your hair, sis, try to follow up with a deep conditioner. And I know some of you are going to ask me, what kind of deep conditioner to use? <laughs> right. So... For deep conditioners, that is dependent on your hair's porosity. I can't stress that word too much. I like to use banana, molasses, and oils and different stuff in my concoction DIY deep conditioners that I use. And that's awesome for my hair. I also like to use avocados and different stuff on my hair to deep condition my hair. My favorite so far, I think, is the pumpkin. Yeah, I need to do a video. Remind me to do a video on how I made my 
pumpkin deep conditioner. I think that's my favorite. But you don't have to do DIYs. You can go to the store and buy a store-bought deep conditioner. Just make sure that it is, you want to go more like to the, lean to the organic side. I think organic products are better than the others because even though they state that it's natural, sometimes you look at the back, you read the ingredients and you see the other chemicals that they have in there. So it's claiming to do one thing and totally destroy your hair over time. And I don't want to get into that right now, but try to do more DIY. But if you're a busy person like myself and you prefer to buy a store, go for organic products and make it last. Like, take a little time. Just, <laughs> just try to make it last because I know those products are expensive. What else? Yes. When it comes to protective style, a lot of persons have been commenting, what protective style should I do? My hair is this long or this short. That's totally dependent on you. Once you can put your hair away every day, you're not getting up to style it, to braid it in one, to catch it, to manipulate it, fine. At least if your protective style lasts minimum two weeks, that is awesome. That is two weeks not having to do anything to your hair. When I keep my braids for like two to three months at a time, I wash my, my hair with braids, I deep condition my hair with braids, I moisturize my hair with braids. My job is not that stiff to say, oh, I can't wear braids. Yeah, I'm a hair stylist. I wear anything I want to. <laughs> but I know y'all are in a professional environment where y'all have to have this nice sleek ponytail and stuff like that. But find a way to comb your hair where you don't have to manipulate it every day. I understand your situation. You're not like me. And frankly, I only do natural hairstyles. I don't do extension styles. So if you ask me what protect style to wear, I'm going to tell you two strand twist, braid, corn rose, you know, put your hair in a bun that will last you probably for a week and twist the ends and pin them under. I don't have any suggestion. While I know crochet styles, I know extensions, they are protective styles as well. But the drawback that I have with those styles, most time you all do it, you do it too tight and then you end up with traction on the patient, which is another story by itself. So find the best protective style that cause you less manipulation you're not touching your hair you're not constantly trying to detangle you know trying to yeah everything that you do to your hair what else do i need to talk to y'all about hmm let me look at my notes one more time yes one very simple thing. I think I started out by saying that, but I don't think you understand. Whenever you're going to detangle your hair, ensure that your hair is moisturized. It doesn't have to be drenching wet where water is dripping out, which I don't recommend because at that stage, your hair is hella fragile. So not too wet, not dry. Something in the middle. Ensure that your hair is moisturized and take your time and go through. Length retention, trust me, the number one problem I see y'all have the fact that your hair is already weak because you're not eating healthy, you're not using the right products, you have underlying health issues, your medications and all. The fact that all of that, but you touching your hair with a comb, you tugging at your hair is just causing it to break off. So it's not just going to break by itself unless somebody touches. <laughs> so it's there, it's weak, you can see that it's thin, you can see that it's weak, but unless you touch it, you don't see bits and pieces coming off. So be extremely gentle with your hair, please. Time to answer your questions. Marjorie is asking, what do you use as heat protector? I did a video on that, Marjorie. I They are store-bought heat protectors that I use sometimes, thermal sheen protectors. But I prefer not to use those because they have a lot of other chemicals in them. So I make my own. I use a good leave-in conditioner, a good penetrating oil. That will penetrate the, the strand of the hair. And I use like glycerin or honey that is con considered to be a humectant. So what humectant does is actually draw moisture from the atmosphere into your strand. So what the heat protectant do is while you're applying the heat to your hair, it acts as a coat over your hair so it doesn't get so much damage. I redeem. <laughs> I don't sell my products on YouTube or I just normally make my products for myself. Sometimes I make them for my clients, like my DIYs, but I'm really considering doing that. 
Hi, Barbara from Texas. Nice to have you here. So M. Goodley is asking, can you condition on dry hair? What conditioner are you referring to? Are you referring to a deep conditioner or a regular leave-in conditioner? Or just conditioner that you use to wash your hair? Lady is asking, how do you prevent fragile ends from breaking? If your ends are fragile, tuck them away. Yeah. Do a style. Like, now that I have braids in, it's protective style. But to even make it more protective, you catch it in a bun and you tuck your ends, wrap them under, tuck them away. By so doing, it'll prevent your hair from breakage. If you know your ends are fragile, always tuck them away from the element. Hi, Blessed Queens from New Jersey. Thanks for joining. Y'all watching this live, give it a big thumbs up. <laughs> Can I make avocado DIY without putting aloe vera? Yes, I don't put aloe vera in my avocados. I use, avo I use aloe vera with other stuff and I use it by itself, but I've never actually used it in my avocado deep conditioner. So yes, you definitely can. Hi, Lydia, all the way from Uganda. Nice to have you. She's asking, can I apply avocado and eggs weekly? I would not recommend that, Lydia, because that is a protein treatment, and protein treatments are not for weekly use. So, no, you don't want to do that weekly. Matter of fact, why do you deep condition so often? Like, you don't need to do that. Two times for the month is okay. You don't need to be doing so much so often to your hair. Just leave your hair alone. Do a protective style. Leave your hair alone. When you take down your protective style, you're going to wash your hair. That's when you do your deep conditioner. Don't focus on washing your hair and doing all of that sort of thing as often. Well, if you have forced hair like myself, just leave it alone. And you'll see. You'll see the, the benefits of doing that. Hi, Life with Kyra from London. Nice to have you. What time is it now in London? Wherever you are in the world, what time is it? What's happening? Is it raining like here in the Cayman Islands? <laughs> so M. Goodley is saying she's from New York. DIY mask or deep conditioner on dry hair? No. I wouldn't recommend that you deep condition on dry hair. What's your hair first? As a matter of fact, clean your hair first. Because by cleaning your hair, then you'll get the good stuff that you put the good stuff out of the product in your strand and that's what you want to get in you don't want to open the strand to dirt and all sorts of chemicals that you may have had on your hair before so i recommend that you wash your hair before you do a deep conditioner unless you're pre-pooing and you use that as a pre poo to coat the strand well fine hi redeem yes i have an opinion on um using dht topical and as a supplement i do dht blockers are awesome but it depends on the type of hair loss that you're experiencing for example if you have androgenic alopecia like male and female pattern baldness you want to take dht supplements because it is caused by that hormone and you have to treat it from inside out so definitely DHT supplements in that case is very good. In the case of some other type of alopecia that is caused from chemicals, that is caused from hormones inside of the body, fine. But not all hair loss is caused from DHT. Some is traction alopecia, some is stress, some is different type of stuff. So you have to make sure that your body gets the nutrients that it needs. So that's why it's crucial for you to see a professional. Try not to diagnose yourself. Well, if you know that you're stressed or you know that something happened three months ago and it really put a lot of stress on your body and then all of a sudden your hair start coming out two months afterwards or three, because never think it happens same times. Your hair will be here, you'll be stressed right now. Your hair is not coming out. But three months, two months after, that's when you actually see how that stress has taken a toll on your body. Even if you're combed out of the stressful ordeal, that's when your hair starts shedding and new hair start regrowing. Yes, you can use a plant extract in your deep conditioner.
Yes, Siru, you can make your leave-in conditioner without aloe vera. Davina is saying, most times I can't comb my hair after shampooing. Even after I put conditioner, I end up losing a lot of hair. Why? That's because you may be using the wrong shampoo and conditioner on your hair. Let me explain that. Some of our shampoos and conditioner have chemicals in them that cause your hair to shed like crazy. Also, some shampoos have sulfates in it. What sulfate does is make your hair really hard, really dry, dries out the moisture out of your hair, and that makes your hair super matted during the shampoo process. So you want to stick, if you find out that you're having problem detangling your hair after shampoos, you may want to stick to conditioning shampoos or moisturizing shampoos or, or shampoos that will detangle your hair, like shamp detangling shampoos, stick to those. And when you're washing your hair, try to do it in sections. I promise you, if you're washing your hair in small sections, like sections, small sections based on the length of your hair, of course, then you'll see a se very severe reduction in the amount of shedding that you have. Because when you're washing in sections, you have to keep your hair stretched. For example, say this, say my hair is out and I'm about to wash it. Picture this as an afro. This is a section that I'm working with. When you're washing your hair in sections, you're not going to be doing this. By doing all of this, if all of my hair was out and I was doing this, you're causing mats and knots to be in your hair. But by doing sections like this, what you'll be doing is focusing the shampoo on your scalp, massaging it in your scalp, ensure that your scalp is clean. And even if you want to wash product built up of your hair, keep your hair stretched like this and work the shampoo. That way you're smoothing the cuticle of your hair you're removing shedded hair by doing this all those loose hair that is coming from your scalp will eventually comes out you're keeping the ends straight and then to rinse that shampoo out keep the hair stretched so you're just focusing on this section forget about the rest of your hair so you're washing out the shower is on so you're washing your hair in your shower the shower is on you're pulling at the hair with the shampoo we're removing the shedded hair washing your scalp make sure you're, make sure that all that shampoo and dirt is gone once you're finished with the stretch section that you have stretched and washed while you're in the shower, you're going to twist it or braid it up. Get it out of the way. Or get a section clip. So you're twisting it, you're braiding it, tuck it out of the way. Move on to another section until all of your head is totally washed. I know it takes time, but I promise you, you'll see a reduction in the amount of hair loss that you get. A reduction in the amount of knots that you have. The amount of, you'll get a severe reduction in the amount of broken hair that you see in the shower. Just do small sections. Keep your hair stretched while you're washing it. Yeah. Once you, your hair is stretched, you won't get as much tangle. You'll have much problem with detangling your hair. I promise you. Do it and come back and tell me how it works for you. Connie, no, I don't use MSM. I've never washed my hair with black soap. I know black soap. I've used it on my skin when I was having terrible acne issues back in high school, but I've never used it for my hair, so I really can't give you an honest review on that. Hi, Miriam. I have not seen your question. Please bear in mind that so many of you are typing in the chat and while I'm talking, it's hard to be reading at the same time. So while I may stop to assist someone, so you have to keep on type over your question until eventually I see it. And guys, if you see somebody typing something in the chat and you have the answer for that question, please assist that person because I'm the only one and all of you are helping me. We are learning from each other. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> T. Wilson is asking, why does store-bought shampoos make me itch? Maybe there are preservatives in the shampoos that you're allergic to. So if the shampoo make you itch, you may want to go for a milder option like a medicated shampoo. See a dermatologist to find out what's happening with your scalp. 
as well as you can go for natural option to clean your hair and your scalp like apple cider vinegar you can go for baking soda but whenever you use these ensure that your hair is moisturized and taken care of afterwards because some of these tend to be stripping to the hair and you don't really want that all right Connie's asks is MSM good to use for hair I've never used MSM so I really can't tell you about it So Miriam is asking, how long is too long for a protective style to be on your head? <laughs> as long as it locks. Like if you do a protective style and you start locking or you start getting fungus and stuff like that, that's too long. But as long as you can keep your protective style without it locking with, and you can keep your scalp clean and healthy, your hair is still healthy and clean, go for it. So if it's even six months, keep it that long. My protective style, like I said so many times before, I keep it at least three. Hi, M. Goodley. She's asking any special treatments on gray or silver hair. When you say treatments, are you meaning things to get revert your hair black to black hair or something that will straighten your gray hair or silver hair what do you mean hi to you Wilson from Trinidad and Tobago I'm so happy to have you I'm so happy to have all of you here with me you know I'm so elated that you're assisting each others in the chat <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here So Camille is asking if she, from Trinidad if she can use protein powder, the one used in smoothies for hair. I wouldn't recommend that, Camille. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can get a good hydrolyzed protein, wheat protein for your hair to use. But I would recommend that you use the supplement that you take for smoothies. All right, so you basically treat gray hair the same that you treat your black hair, except that there are some products, if you love to have your hair nice and gray and silvery, there are some products that you may not want to use on it based on the color, because some products tend to stay like the yellow shea butter and up for the white shea butter if you have gray hair and you want to keep it gray. There are other color colors like shampoos and leave-in conditioners. I would recommend that you stay to products that have white or cream, not too much colors because those the dyes that they tend to use in these products can you know color your hair make your hair have a ugly color so if you want to keep your gray hair shiny and nice and sleek stay to products that are white or cream or yeah hi farah alexis thank you for joining me for the first time subscribe <laughs> Thank you, LRH. She's telling y'all that all essential oils must be diluted in carrier oils. That is simply because it is really concentrated. It is not meant to apply to your skin or your scalp directly. You have to put it in carrier oils or water, whatever product that you're going to add it to, fine. You don't have to be oils. Whatever products you're going to add it to, and you're using like small drops based on the quantity of the products that you're using. Hi, library adjacent. Thank you for being here. Even though you have locks, <laughs> I need to do a video on locks. <laughs> I have quite a few clients with locks and I need to do a video on how to take care for your locks and all. But locks are actually easier than having your ear out because you can retain the length. The issues that you may have with locks is just built up. Like if you use products on your locks, and the treatments that you'd use to maintain healthy, strong locks. Because some person, because they don't treat their locks, it tends to pop easily. It's like the hair is rot by touching it or gently pulling it. You just see the hair breaking. So I need to do that for you. <laughs> I 
Iconic Turner, when it comes to edges, they are the most fragile parts of our hair. So in order for you to actually grow your edges strong and healthy, I'd recommend that you take supplements. Yeah. Take supplements, take hair supplements, and while you're taking those hair supplements, ensure that whatever styles that you're using on your hair is not tight. Sometimes it doesn't feel tight, but when you look at it, you can see the strands pulling, like literally, and that's how you know. So even though you're not conscious that it feels tight, just take a look at your edges to see if it's actually pulling away like this, and that's all. So take your hair and nail supplements to strengthen the follicles, Naturally, the edges of your hair grow take the longer longest to grow. It is the weakest part of your hair. It's on the nape area. So you have to baby it. Like literally, tr don't try to be laying edges all the time. Don't manipulate your edges so much. Yes, you want to massage like castor oil and sal palmetto and stuff like that to stimulate it. But try not to be always bothering your edges. Just leave it alone. Don't put any tension on it. If you have to do styles where you're pulling it up in a ponytail or you're doing braids or putting on wigs, don't put the one. By the way, if you all wear wigs and you wear the wigs with the tight wig bands and you notice that around the nape of your hair and these places receding, like getting really thin, that's because of the band on the wigs. Because by putting pressure on the scalp, it does cause your hair to recede. So if you wear wigs with bands, Try not to spend a lot of time in them. Like if you have a special occasion, fine. But don't live in those type of styles. It does damage to your nape. And I've seen, I know because a lot of my clients come to me and I notice that the back of the hair and the edges start receding. And it wasn't like that before. So when I question, I get to understand that it's the wigs with the bands. Or also if you glue your wigs to your hair. Why would you do that? Why would you put glue on your face? <laughs> I cringe just to think about that. Anyways, that's not that's none of my business. But if you're doing that and you notice that your edges are going, just stop. So pay attention to the styles that you do. When it comes on to risking your edges, if they're already gone, I'll suggest that you take a DHT blocking supplement. I'll suggest that you take a hair growth stimulator like sal palmetto be careful with that if you have art issues and other issues but do your research take supplements baby your hair use a good topical on your hair to stimulate the growth as well and just leave your edges alone they'll grow back eventually Hi, Tia Phil. I understand that your hair can't last for a few, for, for few, well, you see if your hair is light, like if you have loose curls, I'm not sending you to a protective style for three months because that's why my channel is so focused on persons with type 4 hair because with our hair, people think that our hair type don't grow long. It is not true. It's just that the methods that we tend to follow are the methods of other persons with different type of hair texture, like different curl patterns that can wear their hair out every day, all day, every day of the year, and still have long hair. That's simply because their curls are looser. The oils that travel from their scalp, because of the looseness of the curls, get to coat the hair. Their hair is so shiny, so healthy. It doesn't break so much because of the coils. The bonds are stronger, so they can afford to wash and go every single day. They can afford to do so much to the hair. If you have type 4 hair, 4C, 4B, 4A, you don't want to be doing that. It's cute to do a wash and go every now and again, but there's no way you're going to wash and go every day of your life or most of the days of your life and expect to get waistland hair soon. It doesn't happen because when you wash and go, at some point in time, you're going to have to detangle. And over here, once it's out, it doesn't matter how much moisturizer you put in it, sis, it is going to get matted. Once the breeze reaches that hair, <laughs> it is going to get matted. So try not to follow YouTubers, see them, admire them, compliment them, and that's nice. But don't follow them. Don't do what they do to their hair, to your hair all the time. If it's cute and you want to try, fine. But don't do it all the time, sis. That's just going to damage your hair and destroy your hair. And you're not going to see light retention. And you're going to be frustrated. And then you're going to come to me and say, Samantha, I tried everything and my hair is not growing. <laughs> Hi, is this, this is You're saying my hair is always dry. What do I do to make it not dry? How often do I wash it? 
how many times should I moisturize it? What should I use to moisturize it? Where do I start? First of all, if your hair is dry, you, it need water. Water is a moisturizer. Oils do not moisturize hair. A lot of persons, well, back in the days, I don't know, y'all are well learned now, I, I suppose, used to just dab the hair with a lot of oil and then say, oh, I moisturize it and it's still dry. That's because oils are not moisturizer, they're sealant. Moisturizers are based on the amount of water that is in a product or even pure water. So first you put your water on your hair or your leave-in conditioner that is water-based, like the first two to three ingredients is water, or a moisturizer that is the first two to three ingredients is water. And then you want to put oils on top of that to seal, to lock the moisture in your strands. But outside of that, whenever you wash your hair, CC, that's your name? Yeah, easy CC. Whenever you wash your hair, do a deep conditioner, meaning like buy a deep conditioning product or a hair mask, steam your hair with it, or put on your steam cap over it for about 25 to 30 minutes. If you're not sitting on a dryer, if you're going to go on a dryer, 15 minutes will do the trick. And then you wash your hair out. Once you wash your hair out, you don't have to wet it again because it's already wet, obviously. It's already damp. You're going to put your natural oils on it or your butters, like African shea butter. I normally don't use raw shea butter directly on my hair. I normally add stuff to it, like leave-in conditioner oils and different stuff to make it creamy, to make it a little bit lighter. And then I saturate my hair from ends to the root with that. And that will help to seal in the moisture. That won't last forever. So even though you do that, Especially if you are not somebody that is constantly moisturizing your hair, you'll find that shortly after your hair is dry again. Right? I mean, shortly after the next day, a couple hours after, yeah, if your hair is like mine. Like, now I'm talking to you and it's dry as hell. And don't tell me that I didn't moisturize it this morning. <laughs> but I understand. If, if your hair is like that, you just need to walk with a little spray bottle in your bag with a little water, a little leave-in conditioner, some little oil, shake and spritz when you're in your office when nobody is looking or going to the bathroom or, yeah. It's nobody's business anyway. So, just try as often as your hair needs to be moisturized. Spritz it up. You don't have to drench your hair in water. You don't have to... Keep on putting layers of products on your hair. That's just going to make the situation worse because it is forming a barrier on your strands. So the moisture is not really getting there. But a little water and oil and leave-in conditioner does the trick, okay? Okay, you ask how often do you wash your hair? That depends on your hair and scalp situation. For example, if you have danger for itchy scalp you may want to wash your hair every week but if you're like myself that don't really have those type of issue you can wash your hair like every two weeks to a month yeah but if you're using like a lot of products on your hair on your scalp you want to wash it more often than than a month like two weeks yeah two weeks maximum i would suggest that you wash your hair every day or every week two, two weeks give yourself two weeks or a month because I understand that you wear a pretty style that you can't wash your hair in. Like if you have your hair in a crochet style or so, you don't really want to put water on it. So I understand if you wear that style for a month. But try to keep your scalp clean and healthy. So there's no rules to say that you wash your hair this often. But I wouldn't recommend that you wash your hair every day or every week unless you have a scalp issue. So Michelle is saying, hi Sam, my hair has two textures. The sides are soft and longer. The middle is coarse and very short. Find that it breaks a lot in the middle of. That's my problem area. Michelle, I hope this comforts you to let you know that you're not alone. Most of us naturals have different texture here on our head. Like the back maybe <laughs> 4A, the middle maybe 4C, the sides maybe 4B or Hey, some person has straight hair and curly hair on the same head. But the trick is to know what works for each side of your hair. For example, find a protective style that works universally for all of your head. And you want to find a routine that works with all the textures that you have on your head. I know that's going to be difficult, but try and figure it out. Because the finer hair, the looser texture, when it's against the coilier hair, it will tend to break or the one of each will break usually the final here so you want to make sure that 
you're paying special attention to that area you're babying it up especially you're trying to you know just keep it nice and tucked away hi fitness and health cecilia welcome so is is asking if i wash when i have braids all the time like every two weeks to three weeks that's if i don't feel lazy but i wash my hair while i'm wearing braids my hair is in natural braids now i don't wear extensions yeah shrunken and nice but yeah and can you believe guys is like is it three weeks or almost four weeks now since i braided my hair and look at the growth that i have look here can you see that it means that your hair is growing because unlike twists when you twist your hair, sometimes it may get loose and you may mistake it for growth. But with braids, especially if you're a tight braider like myself, because you braid it like this, it doesn't really get loose to travel up here. So you can see the accurate amount of growth that you have. I don't know if you understand what I mean, but I'm so excited. I can't wait to do a lint check when I take this style down. Thank you, Michelle, for coming on here. Give this live stream a big thumbs up. James Henderson is asking, Hi, is castor oil good for baldness in the middle? Castor oil is good. It is great for stimulating hair growth. It is great for thickening the hair. But if you have alopecia, which is the same as bald patches, I would suggest that you find out first what is causing your alopecia. Most time when you have alopecia in the crown area, most cases, not all, in most cases, it is male and female, female pattern baldness that is called by genetics. Yeah, caused by, yeah. So somebody down your line or probably your father, your uncle, your mommy, somebody in the side of some family have that. And first the hair start getting thinning like what mine was doing the other day. Hey, by the way, look how nice my hair is filling out. Yeah, see, I had bald patches all over there graining nicely anyway not to detract from what we're saying basically so that is called by male, male and female pattern bodies it's caused by hormone called dht like i said it's genetic so you don't just want to put a topical on there to grow back your hair you want to address the issue from inside so you want to take a dht blocking supplements and then you want to use a good topical that will really stimulate the blood flow but another great way like a 100% safe method to really grow back your hair you can't do this without doing the DHT blockers let me tell you this though because like I said before it is hormonal but this is awesome for stimulate from outside low light low level lasers like that is just 100% safe and it does work regardless of the type of alopecia that you have by the way except for probably scarring alopecia and alopecia areata because we know that's a whole shellfish by itself but also i'll suggest that you find out the type of alopecia that you have you can consult a dermatologist a trichologist or if you want to hook me up send me an email to new growth naturals and we'll do our consultation so i can determine what is best for you james that'll be good Hi, Miriam. <laughs> yes, God is good. And I have to share his word because had it not been for the grace of God in my life, I don't know where I'd be today. Like I wouldn't be here encouraging y'all because we all go through stuff. My story is not your story, but we know the struggle is real. So to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Can I, can I get an amen? <laughs> I don't know why I like laughing like that. <laughs> Right, so CCW is saying, what if you have an itchy scalp, but when you wash weekly, it causes dryness and breakage? Should I stick to every two weeks wash day? All right, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Sometimes my scalp be itching me, and I do not want to wet my hair, simply because I don't want to ruin the style so quickly. What I do, I get a washcloth, or a rag, whatever you call it in your country. I put some shampoo on it. 
and I rub my scalp with it. Like wet it, put the shampoo on it, rub my scalp everywhere, clean my scalp with it, nice and clean. Wash the cloth out, wash and rub again and rub until I'm comfortable that all the shampoo is gone. You don't want to use too much shampoo because you don't want to really get it too soapy. Just enough to clean your scalp. And even if you don't want to use shampoo, fine. Just put some nice water on your cloth and you rub your scalp. Rub it, rub it, rub it. That will last you. So you don't have to wash every week. You can do it at least two weeks if you have itchy scalp. Because like you said, your hair breaks. Because I guess that is derived from the dryness. Another thing that you can also do instead of using shampoo to wash your hair use co-wash co-wash is a lot gentler than shampoos so if you have to wash your hair every week do a co-wash instead of doing shampoo so this week you do co-wash next week you may do a shampoo or do a shampoo once per month and the other times that you have to wash do a co-wash or use like apple cider vinegar or baking soda or something like cinnamon also you can do a scalp detox by using activated charcoal that is just awesome from pulling impurities and all these built up from your scalp and your hair you definitely should try that. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> said hi Samantha thanks so much I really enjoy your videos and I'm learning a lot from you you're welcome we are here to learn from each other most of these challenges I had and it was very frustrating to me because my hair never grew past this length I kid you not it was always so short so dry it would break easily it was so thin like this is not the thickest my hair has ever been because obviously I had a scalp issue that gave me alopecia and my hair is thinning out but my hair grew so thick when I started caring for it. I never knew my hair could grow to waist length because it always grew and stopped at a particular length like here. That's the longest it has ever been. That's the longest I've ever known my hair to grow to. And most persons would say that, oh, your hair is never going to grow past the length that it always grows and stop. But that's not true. I realize our hair is weaker, especially for C hair. It breaks easily, it gets dry easily, so you have to be meticulous when selecting products, when selecting styles, when selecting how you treat your hair in order to retain length. And sometimes it appears to grow slower. That's not necessarily true. Some 4 hair does grow at the same pace as other persons with looser texture. It's just that because it's so coily, it doesn't show most of the length. But if you were to blow dry your hair, to do a length check each time with somebody else that has a looser texture, you'd realize that it is the same length, it just shrinkage is real. <laughs> so Bonnie Banks is asking, what supplements do I suggest? Give me a minute, Bonnie. I'm going to show you the supplements that I am using for my alopecia. Well, it's not my, I was told not to say my alopecia, but for my thinning hair that has really helped it to be growing in and filling in nicely let me get that for you just give me a second i got it so this is it this is XTC hair growth system. XTC meaning extreme hair complex. And this, you can't get this on Amazon. Yeah, it's not available like on those places because it, you have, it has to be recommended by a hair professional, like a cosmetologist, a psychologist, a hair loss specialist and persons like that. You may see persons online selling them, they are professionals and all. But I'll definitely to issue these out to clients. I usually do a consultation to see what their health issues are, what type of alopecia they're experiencing, some background checks and so on. Then I know to recommend because some of these have shellfish in it. Some of some are shellfish free. So if you're allergic to shellfish, then you'd want to go for the one for shellfish free. If you have heart issues and so on. I may not want to give you some of the supplements that I'll use and so on. So it's a lot of stuff, but it is really good. And like I said, it's mostly natural ingredients. 
so that's why i use this and i'm loving it so far this is just one month supply but they have the the kit that comes with the topical the shampoo the hair growth boost system that has the treatment to really help your hair to grow i think it comes like the kit comes with five different stuff or four different stuff on the kit that i recommend and they have the three month supply um supplements in that kit so the kit lasts you for three months whatever is in the kit lasts you for three months including the supplements yeah so that's what i take hi felina joseph she's asking what she can do to grow her toddlers 4c here how old is your toddler that's what i'd like to know Hey, Pammy, nice to have you. So M. Goodley is asking, how do we thicken 4C here? Take supplements, use castor oil. Castor oil is known to thicken in here. And try to do a lot of scalp massages whenever you use your stimulative oil, like pumpkin seed oil, along with castor oil, rosemary oil, avocado oil also aloe vera all of those are ingredients that really help to thicken the hair so definitely try some or one of those depending on what you hear like right so felina says her child is seven years old the same thing that you use for your regimen once it's a natural once, once they're natural and they agree with her you can use it on her but try to do mostly protective style when i was a little girl my mom used to comb my hair that lasts for two weeks to go to school she didn't really do so much because she knows that she's supposed to do a protective style but we knew that because our hair is so thick so coarse it's going to get matted then she can't bother to get up to catch our hair up every day to go to school she would braid it small to make it last for two weeks and by so doing i was retaining a lot of length even though you know subconsciously it wasn't you know it wasn't something that was deliberate and that's what really kept my hair moisturized and stretched so i suggest that you do the same thing for your child here do a protective style if you don't want to go for two weeks you can do one that lasts for a week be extremely gentle with her hair so you don't necessarily have to be trying to stimulate growth for a child that age her metabolism metabolism is quite active just give her fruits and vegetables natural food you don't have to think about supplements and topicals to apply to her scalp to stimulate growth just do protective style do our deep conditioners to prevent breakage be extremely gentle with the child's hair and it will grow and you'll see it that's all just be gentle do deep conditioner treatments feed her good and be like use natural oils on her hair but don't be bothered about the child here it will grow you just need to take care of it to retain the length hi pami she said that she's 10 how can i grow my 4c hair <laughs> baby girl your hair is beautiful and I'm happy that you're looking to grow it. So the first thing that you need to know is your hair naturally grows. So because your hair is naturally growing, what you need to do is just be gentle with your hair, be patient with your hair, keep your hair moisturized, and that will allow your hair to grow to the length that you want it to. By being gentle, I mean when you're combing out your hair, do it in sections. Start from the ends, make sure it's moisturized first, and then you work your way up to the root and comb your hair to last for at least two weeks or at least a week. When you're taking down your protective style, be extremely gentle so you don't break through it. Don't comb through your hair when you're taking down protective style. Just take your time, take it down, and I promise you, girl, you'll retain length. But hair doesn't grow overnight. Don't watch YouTubers that tell you, oh, they get an inch in a week or an inch in two weeks. It is all lies. It doesn't happen. If there was a miracle product or a supplement to make your hair grow that fast, it would be all over in the pharmacy. <laughs> it would be all over everybody that tried it. It would have been working or for most people and it would be all over and everybody would have known about it. But it's just for views. They're just doing it for views. It's not true. Yes, you can take supplements and products to stimulate the follicles to make your hair grow a little faster than how it used to, to grow back ball patches and can't amount of growth that you can say, oh, it grew one inch in a week. It doesn't happen. You don't even grow one whole inch in a whole month. 
regardless of whatever you're using yes you may get a little bit more than what you normally get because you're taking better care because you're taking the supplement so it's boosting you're getting nutrients boosting blood flow to the scalp and everything but don't let the trick you just take your time be patient and aim for at least six inches for the year if you can retain six inches for the year which is um approximately the amount of hair everybody grow on the scalp on a yearly basis some person a little bit more some person a little bit less if you get that amount per year and say you trim your hair like you cut an inch off you'll actually be retaining five inches per year eventually by three years time you'll end up with 15 inches your hair will get longer so don't focus too much on doing something to make your hair grow fast it, it, it's all yes yeah Lord, Lord, the lover forever is saying, hello, sis, my hair is brittle. Even when moisture, moisture everywhere grown except my edges. That's because you may have traction alopecia. So if that's not how you know your edges to be, like if you weren't born that way, it may be traction alopecia. What traction alopecia is, is because you probably done styles that are too tight in the past. And by continuously pulling on the edges, they eventually made the follicles dormant. The hair do, did not regrow, so they don't grow back. So in order to really get your hair to grow back, I'll suggest that you take supplements, that you use stimulative product on your hair, to do styles that don't pull on your edges. And also, I'd recommend that you get a laser hair growth band or helmet to actually stimulate and regenerate the follicles if they have been dormant for a while, so your hair can grow back. Yes, Deborah, amla oil is good for natural hair. I ask you, Bruan, she says, I says, I ask you, about my itch and sore scalp but you didn't answer me <laughs> i do apologize there are a million of you up on here commenting on my videos on a daily basis i do try to respond to as much as possible but sometimes i miss and sometimes i'm too busy to go on to see so if your scalp itch and your scalp sore see a dermatologist because the remedies that i'm going to give you are general remedies that would may help you when my nose itches yeah like right here itch Right. There are general remedies that everyone can use, like aloe vera, it will soothe the scalp, it will soothe the soreness. But for example, if you're having folliculitis and that's causing the itching and all, you need some sort of medication, some sort of topical that will really help you with that. But I can give you natural remedies that you can try first, like the neem oil. You can try using neem oil. You can try using, using aloe vera, coconut oil. You can try make sure that your products are ph balanced but if that persists like if it continues see a dermatologist please all right hi beverly francis welcome <laughs> hi hk welcome so rochelle is saying i sleep with a processing cap to retain moisture is that wise it's okay to do it every now and again, but I would not recommend you doing it consistently because oh, moisturized don't mean that you have water in your hair. Like you look at your hair, you can feel that like it is wet. No, my hair can be moisturized, yet when I touch it, it feels dry. So moisturizing don't mean that you touch your hair, you look at your hair, it looks wet or it looks, no. You will know when your hair is dry like mine. I know it is dry now from when wet being wet like you put something wet on it yes it is moisturized at that time but even when that product evaporates and your hair looks a little bit dry like to the touch it is dry it doesn't mean that your hair is not moisturized so i wouldn't recommend that you continuously sleep in a steam cap or whatever to keep all that moisture in your hair i re you can do it every now and again like if you're going to pre pull your hair or you're doing the greenhouse effect because you have low parts to hair, but don't do that overnight. You're gonna damage you're gonna damage, do more damage than arm because our scalp was meant to really kept at a certain level where dryness and moisture balance is concerned. So if you're keeping it wet, you may be encouraging fungus, encouraging certain 
you know, foreign matters like insects and so on to live on your scalp. You don't want that. You want your scalp to have the perfect balance that it was created to have. So I would recommend that you do that. So Beverly Francis is asking, is there a WhatsApp number where I can call you? <laughs> yes, I have a WhatsApp number for y'all to contact me. But I'm going to explain something to you while I want to do your consultations and all. Because of the nature of my job, I can't do one-on-one -on -one with everyone like that. For example, if I decide that I'm going to do paid consultation, I can afford to take this day off and say, you know what? I'm going to do a paid consultation. And based on the consultation, that salary that I'll get for that day would suffice for it. I don't mind helping you all. I come in live right now for a few hours to help you directly. So if I give out my WhatsApp number on social media, my phone is going to blow up. Everyone is going to call me. I'm not going to get time when I come home from work to do my stuff. So I prefer to set up a paid consultation um, method for you to contact me. You pay your money, get one and one when I do have the time and you, you know, you're paying for value. So you're getting value as opposed to somebody person's always messaging me and then you're not going to get the response and then you're going to be bitter against because you say oh i send you messages i email you you're not responding yeah i'm just telling you the truth so please don't be upset with me i'm just telling you the truth i have a life and this is how i see myself giving back to you by coming live responding to your questions opening a window for you to pay me if you want private consultation and also you know just to share videos occasionally when i'm not that busy i really can't give out my number you all have my email i can check emails every now and again but if i give out my whatsapp number or my contact i know a million of you're going to be sending me a message and i there's no way it's my, me alone responding to all of you i'm going to be able to keep up with that and then y'all going to be next <laughs> you're going to be upset because i'm there on whatsapp i'm online and i'm not responding to your message yeah So Darkus is asking, is aloe vera gel same as the plant? I want to say no. Yes and no. Yes, it is from the aloe vera and it's the aloe vera gel. But because they have to put a lot of preservatives and other stuff to dilute it and all, it doesn't give you the same effect. Similar but not the same. So I would recommend that if you have the plant, use the plant. If where you are, you can't access the plant, use the gel. Yeah. HK saying, ma'am, I don't have hair, so what should I do? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not laughing at you, you just sound so funny. <laughs> what do you mean that you don't have hair? Is it that you have your hair ball, like you have alopecia, or is it that you choose to keep your hair low, or you don't want hair? I'm not sure. Are you just being funny? <laughs> So, Life with Kira is saying, I usually wear my hair out and after one hour it is already dry. Please help. Most of us, it does happen. Leave the hair alone once you sure that. Say you moisturize your hair this morning. You sure you moisturize and sealed it properly. Leave the hair alone. But it can also be a case where you have high porosity hair. Let me explain that to you. If you have high porosity hair, You'll be moisturizing your hair and your hair may suck up all the moisture and say, yes, that was fast. It got really, really moisturized fast. That's because the cuticles of your hair are open. And as fast as your hair is moisturized, it loses moisture as just as quickly. So if you have high porosity hair, you want to make sure that you're using more creamy sealants, creamy butters to moisturize and seal your hair, or else that both penetrate and coat the hair. Also, you want to be doing a lot of protein treatments that will build a barrier around those cuticles to sort of compact it so you don't lose moisture so easily. And this is the same case with low porosity hair. Low porosity hair is the opposite of high porosity hair. It means that the cuticles are so tightly closed. When you put the products on your hair, it's just sitting on the strand waiting to evaporate. But just to get the cuticle open a little bit, you need to use a little bit of heat like not like a blow dryer heat like like sitting on a dryer with a steam cap on with a shower cap on that will help the cuticle to open up with the product on your hair to penetrate the strand 
and then you use a sealant to close it off and that will keep your hair moisturized for a while. So knowing your hair porosity, like I said so many times, is really important, all right? Hi, Chambers. I can't pronounce your first name. Welcome to the channel. You said you're new, subscribe. <laughs> You're welcome, Life Akira. Hi, Rafter Petal. I did not see your previous message. What do you want me to talk to you about? <laughs> yes, Russia, aloe vera juice is okay. But if you have the real aloe vera plant, use that instead. Hi, HK, why would you put margarine on your bald head? I've never heard anything like this before. Please enlighten me. <laughs> what does margarine do to your bald head? <laughs> this is so, y'all are so funny. Hi, Terrell Tony, thanks for joining. <laughs> The same advice I give to the females goes for the males as well. <laughs> he just said, I don't know that there's a lot of males. I take it for granted that sometimes males come on and watch me. I'm not trying to be prejudiced or trying to, yeah, I take it for granted. I'm sorry, you guys. If you're a man and you're watching this live, give me a big thumbs up. Like, let me know that you're there so I can say, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So Jackie's asking, will the microwave cap work with heat on the hair? Yes, it will. So definitely use that up. That's awesome. I had one, like I got one normally when I was going to deep condition my hair at home. I would like put on my deep conditioners, wet a towel, put it in the microwave, then wrap my steam cap with it. Now I got like the reheatable microwave cap. Breeze, I love it so much. And the one that I got has flaxseed in it instead of the gel thing. So I, I don't have to feel afraid that it's going to pop or some accident is going to happen and all that gooey stuff come out. And once I put it on the microwave, like a minute on each side and then I put it on my shower cap. Oh my gosh, I get so such good results and I can eat it as often as I want. So you should definitely go for that. Irish more. I use aloe vera right throughout my regimen, not just as a pre poo I leave it on my scalp sometimes, and sometimes I use it with other stuff to make a deep conditioner. So yes, you can use it as a pre poo Lux by Baby Sham says, Hi, Samantha. My natural hair braids get fuzzy easy, especially when I wash my hair in braids. Any suggestions? yeah don't wash your hair so often like do dry cleaning sometimes <laughs> i mean i'm literal wet your rag or whatever you use to shower with and wipe your scalp sometimes that will help you to like, make the style last longer or you can even do a dry shampoo like they have dry shampoo product you can use but you don't have to wash your braids so often unless you probably have itchy scalp problem So Abu Bakar saying, please help me out. My nape area isn't growing. All right. So when it comes to nape area, because it is at the back of our head, it tends to rub against the linen, the clothes, the different stuff that we tend to wear on our skin, lay on, touch, lean up against. It tends to break easy. It's very fragile. So you want to ensure that all time, don't keep the protective style that you wear too long in the nape area like now that i have in braids while i'll take a while to redo my entire braids i will generally put pull out like the first row all around especially to the back i'll pull out the back first redo it moisturize everything but you have to be very gentle with your nape area it's very fragile so do a protective style keep it moisturized but while you're wearing a protective style at least every week just tend to pull it out just take your time pull it down 
and redo it because it tends to pick up a lot of lint and because of picking up that lint it tends to break when you're taking down your protective style i hope that was helpful so tanya lisa edwards i hope i'm pronouncing your name right she's saying what can i use to bring back a natural sheen to my hair for the first time somebody had asked me that question i don't think any of you had actually asked me that question before and it is a really good question sometimes why your hair is looking dull is because of product built up yes i said it right you've been using so many stuff to your hair so by constantly packing on layers of products on your hair your hair becomes dull so i'll, su I'll suggest that you strip your hair like do a hair detox. Detox your hair and your scalp to lift the all of those layers of product on your hair. And then once you do that, do a rehydration treatment to actually moisturize back your hair. And you'll be good. Yeah. So, in, so Collins is saying, that's Eleanor Collins, I am using the rosemary ginger oil, but I need more moisture. What can I use beside water? Use a good leave-in conditioner or a good moisturizer. And I'll suggest that if you know your hair parsley that you buy one along that line. Like, I like to do the mixture with African Shea Butter, Giovanni Direct Weightless Moisture Leave-In Conditioner. Put my oil to that, whip it up, and then I like to add that to my hair. That really helps to keep my hair moisturized for longer. My braids last. All right, look at how my hair is. It is frizzy. It just doesn't look so bad because it's 4C. That's one of the perks of having 4C hair. It doesn't frizz so easily, and when it does frizz, it looks like lock. <laughs> so it don't look so terrible, but it has been growing off from the roots. So you see all these loose hair, and look, I still need to redo it. You see lint in here. So to really prevent your hair from getting so frizzy, try not to get it wet so often. Yeah, try not to wash it if you don't have to. Like if you don't have to wash often, like if you don't have itchy scalp, if you don't use a lot of products on your scalp. Don't wash it that often. But if your hair gets frizzy, like if you have a looser texture than mine, feel free to take your time. Do over your braids one by one when, when your hands are not so tied up. That would really help you to retain the length just the same. Not everybody will be able to go for three months. And there's another thing that I realized. When I started doing my protective style, like when I started going on my natural hair growth regimen and started decided to braid my hair consistently, at first when I braid my hair for the first time, by the time it was two weeks, it looked so crazy. Like, I had to take them down. But I realized the more I braided my hair, the more I deep conditioned my hair, moisturized my hair, braided my hair, the style was lasting longer. So I think that by constantly doing it, you're going to be training your hair, training your strands. I don't know if this makes any sense, but this is just my, my ex personal experience. And other person that have been wearing braids, they're realizing that by consistently doing it, they are able to make the style last longer. So, train your hair. So, Naomi Grace is saying, my hair is, I think that word is shedding so much. I cut my ends, but it's still bad. My end. All right. So, the difference between shedding hair and breakage is that one comes from the root that is shedding. One breaks off from the hair. It doesn't have to be the ends. It can be in the middle, wherever. Once it does have that little white bulb on it, it means that it broke off from somewhere. Shedded hair generally has the bulb on it, the root of the hair on it, and that's how you know the difference. So is it that your hair is shedding, sis, or is it breaking? Because breakage is different. You totally address that situation different from a person here that is having ex experiencing excessive shedding. Hi, Terrell Tona, <laughs> again. So honey is worth it. Eat it and put a little tip on your hair, not much. 
it depends on your hair porosity but honey is good for the hair it's a natural humectant that draws moisture here you won't put honey well i know you probably know this you don't put the raw honey on your hair you usually just add it to your product like your deep conditioners or a little bit in your moisturizer but it does help adele is asking what oils are usually best for a low porosity hair for low porosity hair i'd go like argan oil or hoba oil pumpkin seed oil awesome pumpkin seed oil and lighter oils that's actually good for oils without protein you want to stay away from coconut oil too much because it's going to make your hair hard going to feel dry and crispy if you have low pores to hair right so if you're having excessive sh shedding naomi grace i think that is because that can be from a number of factors, including stress. Stress is normally number one culprit when you're having excessive or severe shedding. So try to lower your stress levels, try to eat healthy, try to exercise. But most importantly, you can do a topical treatment that minimizes the amount of shedding that you get on your hair. You can use like caffeine. When I mean caffeine, I mean caffeine products like coffee, green tea, to rinse your hair or to put on your scalp don't put it directly on your hair because it's really drying to the hair and if you do get some under do a nice moisturizing deep conditioner to combat that but caffeine really helps to minimize the amount of shedding that you see and you do not want if you choose to do a caffeine treatment like use coffee use the natural one the most natural form that you can get without the additives and preservatives and the sugars and the salts and all the natural state or the green tea Use it on your scalp for no longer than 10 to 15 minutes. Rinse it out. Do not use it for more than two times for the month. All right? But it works. It does work. So Gabriella is asking, best oil for high porosity when I have braids on. If you have high porosity here, stick to thicker oils like castor oils. Coconut oil is okay. I would use coconut oil by itself. Yeah, I'll mix it with the castor oil. Extra virgin olive oil is also good for that. Avocado oils. Oils like those are generally good for high porosity here. Sweet almond oil as well. Fitness and health, Cecilia says, I and daughter like straightening our hair with heat. How can we protect it from heat damage? Use a heat protector. When you do that, before you straighten your hair, do a protein treatment. Once you do a, wash your hair, do a protein treatment before you straighten it. Use a heat protector and keep your hair, like, ensure that your ends are not, you don't focus the heat too much on your ends. Use low heat, yeah. Don't use a low heat setting. That will help. But if you're really, if your goal is to retain a lot of length, I would suggest that you continuously put heat on your hair to straighten it. There are other methods that you can use to straighten your hair. But if it's not, you just want to straighten your hair and wear hair all the while. People like to heat train their hair. Fine. If you don't plan to retain a lot of length, those are the tips that will really help. Okay. So Bonnie Banks is saying, Sam, I made a lot of different oils. Can I mix them together? Yes, you can generally mix and mingle oils. Depends on the nature that they are and your hair's porosity. So if your hair like particular oils and you want to mix them, that's fine. Yes, WM, shea nut oil is good oil. So, Jackie is saying, when using microwave cap, it's hot. Do I need something to wear with it? Well, usually when I'm doing my microwave cap, it comes with instructions that you should do it like one minute on each side. It is warm enough, but it's not as hot as I think you're suggesting. But with the microwave cap, it normally comes with steam caps in it, like shower caps. So, you'd have to put that on first, obviously, and then put the cap on it. So, there's nothing else that you need, but I suggest that you don't let your microwave cap stay longer than 45 to 1 minute. 45 seconds to 1 minute in the microwave, all right? So Nadine Brown is saying, Hi Sam, I use carrot, ginger, aloe vera, shea butter, shea butter, and essential oils to make a deep conditioner. Is that good for hair growth? Yes, it is good. It is awesome. 
Yes, Bonnie Banks, indeed, drinking lots of water does help. Dark Cross is asking, does any honey work? You want to get honey that is organ, it's not mixed with sugar and, you know, add additives and all. But pretty much any honey will work. WM is asking, how do you prevent breakage by taking your braids down? I'd like to let you know, WM, that I did a lot of videos on removing my braids. And when I'm taking down this, I plan to do another video. So if you want to retain length when you're taking your braids down, you want to make sure that your braids are moisturized. I usually just saturate my hair with oil or shea butter mix instead of a conditioner. Conditioners are fine. Depends on your texture. Depends on your neck of the woods, what you prefer to use. You can either use a conditioner or you can just saturate it with oils. And then usually I use a pin like a hairpin. And then I start picking my braids from the end. I pick like, like right here. Like where you have. So I pick right here at a time. And by picking it like that, I don't get any breakage because I'm not tugging at my hair and causing knots and pulling the hair out. So you can watch one of those videos. To see exactly how I take my braids down safely, retaining the length that I grow from my scalp. All right. So M and M twenty twenty says my hair be looking like an afro, and I'm white. It gets so frizzy all the time. <laughs> Girl, the struggle is real. But hey, try and do a protective style if you have afro hair. Well, especially if you want to retain it. I love to have my hair out in an afro. But I don't wear it like that all the time because I know it's when it's time to detangle my hair. Oh my gosh, I start crying before. Literally, I cry in my heart. Because I can't cry out like people see that I'm crying. Because <laughs> my scalp is so sensitive and my hair, once it's out, it's going to sparm not. No matter how well you moisturize it before, trust me. So I feel you, girl. So Life with Kira says, I recently installed knotless braids. How long do you recommend they stay in? And how long do you recommend they stay out before installing them back? And how do I take care of them whilst they're in? So I do a whole series, even though it's not extensions, I do a whole braid series on how to maintain braids and all. And I think even though I'm not wearing extensions in my series, it is pretty much the same. It's just that one is added here. So with knotless braid, you can keep them very long, up to three months. Normally, people keep braids for like a month or two. You can keep it up to three months if you wish. But because of the weight of the braids on your hair, I would recommend that you give your hair a break before you put that back in, like probably two weeks, a week or two. And also, try not to, when you're doing your knotless braid, ensure that it's not tightly done because you don't want to end up with traction alopecia when you're just trying to retain some length, all right? When it comes to maintenance, just get your spray bottle with your water and your oils, your leave-in conditioner shake and lightly spritz. You don't want to put in you don't want to be putting thick creamy products on your hair while you're having um extensions in. Yeah. So light moisturizers, because the extensions already act as a protective barrier against environmental factor. So you may want to do that. So someone said my hair is only breaking in the front i feel you i understand but is there something that you're doing to the front of your hair that is not doing the rest of the other sections think about it and let me know you're welcome so tanya lee lisa edwards is asking what are the best hair detox i like to do natural detox for example I like to use the Tonight Clay Mask to detox my hair. I like to use activated charcoal. I like to use cinnamon powder mixed with baking soda and also water to detox my hair and my scalp or apple cider vinegar. I opt for more natural options when it comes to detoxing my hair and scalp. All right? My tummy is growling. I'm actually very hungry now. 
I've been talking to y'all for like an hour and 34 minutes. I can't believe I sat here talking to you so long. <laughs> and now my tummy is literally making sounds. I'm hungry. Y'all, I'm hungry. What am I going to eat? Yeah, I'll think about it when I talk to you some more. <laughs> Right, so if you're wearing a wig for protective style, like your name is Peg Loving Washido, right? So if you wear a wig for protective style, the drawback with wearing a wig constantly is that our hair needs to breathe. Yes. So our hair needs oxygen, needs sunlight, along with other nutrients that are, are natural gas that is in the environment. I realize that if you wear a wig consistently over time, your hair will start getting thinner. I noticed that. So while you may retain length, you'll notice that your hair will fall out a whole lot because if it's not getting all the nutrients from the air naturally, it is suppressing the oxygen, suppressing all the nutrients that needs to be getting in your follicles, need to get in, in your scalp to provide a healthful environment, eventually your hair will fall. Nothing is wrong with wearing a wig for protective style, but don't do it consistently. Don't do it all the time. Switch up your methods. Make sure that whatever styles you do, your hair can get maximum, you know, opportunity to breathe. Okay? Bunny banks of beef curry. <laughs> I don't eat beef. I used to though. I know it's nice, but I'm leaning more to the vegetarian side of life these days. So I like like lentils, I like curry chick beans, I like a lot of bean stew, oh gosh, mixed bean stew, red pea soup, stew peas. Oh god, this is what making me more hungry. <laughs> Melissa is Louis to say I enjoy the braids. That's awesome. Me too. They are my favorite go to protect the style simply because I can let them be. I don't have to get up in the morning and wonder how oh, I'm gonna fix up my hair or when they start looking bad, I can style it up like what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the week. I'm going to just be doing some cute little styles with my braids. I'll do a video on that for some of you because I know some of y'all are wearing braids. So I'll post video. I always do videos when I do my braids on how I style it to give it a different look. I even did a video with wearing scarf, different type of scarf when my hair start really looking that terrible and I'm not ready to take them down yet. You can check out my channel with those for those videos as well. Someone is asking, what is the best treatment to use in preparing hair for a long-term protective style like not braid? A protein treatment. Definitely a protein treatment. Because that's just gonna help to strengthen your hair while it, the style is being done and to protect your hair because over time your hair will lose protein. So. Definitely while your hair is being protected, it's going to be in a protective style for a long time. Do a protein treatment before. Okay, thank you. What can I use to get thicker hair in the front where the breakage is? Black Jamaican castor oil. <laughs> Yeah, black Jamaican castor oil and pay attention to your moisture balance, moisture protein balance in the hair. Jackie is asking, no, she's saying thank you for your help. Need to leave doctor appointment. Bye. Bye, Jackie. I'm happy that you are here. <laughs> so Adele is asking, how much times per week do you usually moisturize low porosity to hair? Girl, I've been moisturizing my hair at least four times for the week. Moisturizing and sealing. When I just started, I was moisturizing every day, several times for the days. But I get to learn as I go on that it's not that bad. At first, because we weren't doing it for so long time, your hair becomes devastated. Just like when you get dehydrated, so you have to do up your moisture balance inside of your body, drink a lot of water, probably go on saline and all sort of stuff. But the more you drink your water, your body's becoming more accustomed to moisture. You don't have to do it that much anymore. So when you're just starting, if you're just starting, sometimes more than two times for the day, sometimes every day for the week, but you do it less and less until you find that you're only moisturizing and sealing like three times for the week, four times for the week, and you'll be fine. Christine is asking, is rice water a protein treatment? Yes, it does. Yes, it is. Rice water is con 
consider it to be a protein treatment because it has a lot of protein in it. It has inositol that cause your hair as well. So it's considered to be a protein treatment. Hi, Manana, all the way from, is that Swaziland or Switzerland? Hello. <laughs> I don't know that country, by the way. I need to, y'all, I need to travel. COVID has done a lot. I actually plan to do a lot of traveling this year, but hey, too bad COVID came along the way. But I, I'm here traveling with y'all because some of y'all are from some country that I don't even know where they are. And I don't even know the names, but I'm happy that you're here. Hi, Mamta from Trinidad. See, I know Trinidad. My mom lives in Trinidad. Actually, she lives in Tobago, but I hear Tobago is very beautiful. Yes, Adele, my email address is newgrowthnaturals at gmail.com. Yeah, I have to go get dinner now, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this live. I hope I was able to help you with assisting you with a lot of the questions that you had to ask. And I hope this live stream was helpful to you. While I could not have answered all of your questions, I hope like when I when you watch my videos, leave a comment. Once you leave a comment with a question, even if I don't answer you immediately then and there, I'll make a note of it that a lot of persons have been asking this particular question and I'll do a live stream just to respond. Because while I can't go through all of the comments, even though I read them, while I can't stop to respond to all of them, I may give you a heart or a thumbs up. I take notes of your questions and I do live streams just to answer, all right? And if you feel like, if you feel impressed to support me, because I do need your support, you can PayPal me, PayPal New Growth Naturals, all right? Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Come on, you say thank you for your live stream. Thank you so much for have been here with me from well, it's almost two hours now. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Thank you for sharing in the comment section with each other because you have been responding to each other's question, answering you guys are so awesome. But don't forget, Jesus loves you no matter what happens, not just with your hair, but holistically in life. God has you. He created you in his image. He loves you with an everlasting love. And the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whether animate or inanimate. Nothing. And if God sent his son to die for our sins while we're yet sinners, while we did not know him, while we did not desire to be reconciled with him, there is nothing much greater. There's not a love that is much greater than that. Because I have my only son. I have a son. His name is Stephen. And I can't see myself, even though I'm sinful, to sin, Stephen to die for somebody that is guilty of something, my innocent child. I, I can't see through that, but only God can be God. So Jesus love you. Be good. <laughs> Bye. Give this live stream a big thumbs up before you go, all right? And yes, if you have questions after you finish watching this live stream, Comment on it below because I know I'm going to get off now, but I know you have questions still, and I'll go through it and I'll respond to your comment. All right. Bye bye.